What's up my dudes? I've been meaning to make this video forever. Thanks to the people of the internet that uh, it makes me believe that I can achieve goals like this. Today I've rounded up the whole collection that I have and I just want to show you what I have acquired over the years of E34 life. right here that I ever bought and then right here we got a 530 we got the 535 540 and then the M5 uh, in America the only car I'm really really missing is the M20 525 but 525 is here shout out to my neighbors this is not my house <laughs> I took out I took over all the parking so I gotta hurry up and put these cars back on the street I live in California where it's overpopulated so these cars have to get out before my neighbors get mad Shout out to them, shout out to you guys to make me believe that I can achieve something like this. The least I could do is just put it back in a video. I said it, we are now in the 525. This is the car I bought not too long ago and it's already about to sell. This is my 525 sedan that's a stick shift. I was gonna do it in my automatic, why? When you got a stick shift, right? Honestly, the way I think about the 525 in a brief overview, this is the best bang for your buck. It's uh, not the quickest, it's uh, pretty desirable and it saves gas. The reason why I say it's the best bang for your buck because you can literally beat on this car and it, it takes it. Let's ask Lena what she likes about a 525. Oh, freak, okay. I like the 2.5 liter because it saves gas <laughs> compared to other E34s. Now, let me show you a little bit of acceleration on this 525. So it goes, you know what I mean? It goes, and at the same time, you're saving gas. <laughs> a quick overview of the 525, save gas. You got the M50, which is the least maintenance motor. You got hydraulic lifters, so you don't really have to worry about like uh, adjusting the valves or anything like that. You got this beautiful straight six sound. And uh, with a five speed, it's the best ultimate choice, the best bang for your buck, because you get best of both worlds. You get least maintenance, you get fun drivability, and you get saving gas. It's not the most powerful thing in the world, but with a turbo, and a lot of people do this, especially on the M50 motors, you can hold a lot of power. So if you're ever tired of the M50 being slow, slap a turbocharger on there for like 4,000 bucks, and you got a modern day fast car. But for the most part, it's still 525 for life, boy. What's up guys, another day, another dollar. We are in the 530 now, and a quick review of the 530 pros and cons. Try not to be biased. Excuse the car because this is the future drift car. It's in a work in progress right now. But um, off the top of my head, if I forget anything, just comment below on any of the models. Top of my head, pros and cons about the 530. Pros, beautiful sound, amazing M60 V8 sound. It's a great platform to swap a B40. There is accessibility of M60 V40 parts. So if you ever want to go that route, it's a good chassis to build. So that's why I chose it to be a drift build because I can modify it without the peers getting upset. The only real reason why I see that they can get upset is because there's not many 530s around. So I understand that point of view. This one's a 530 with a five speed. And if you get a 530 with a five speed, it's it's got a little bit of giddy up. This thing goes, I can't really show you because the motor mounts, we'll add that to the cons right now. But uh, I do a slight pull. It's got a single mass flywheel, but uh, it goes fairly well. Yeah, the motor's already lifting. All right, let's move to the cons. So if you did get a 530, um, be prepared to spend a lot on gas because this is a gas guzzler. And uh, smiles per gallon is not really worth it because it's not that quicker than a 535, I should say. No bashing on the 530, but if you do get one, it's the best one to modify. So this is a drift car. Can't wait to be sliding this bad boy around. So when the V30 blows, I can just drop in a a B40. For the most part, you gotta love your 530, man. This thing sounds beautiful. It would sound beautiful and you're going nowhere, which is all good with me because I don't like to get in trouble. The 540, it sounds amazing. And the more you punch it, the faster you go and the faster you're gonna get in trouble. 530, you punch it, you're not going nowhere, but making amazing noise. So, pick your poison. What's up, fam? Today is kind of a sad day for me. It's on 535 right now. You guys have your eye on a 535. Some things you need to look out for. 535 and a short summary. Start with the cons. The technology is old. It's just an older E34. You know, it starts from 89 to 91, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. And 535 owners, uh, just comment below if I miss anything. But this is just a brief little overview. 
Now, the positives of the 535 that I have seen, it's a baby M5. It's like power range is the same thing. Um, the M30, is, it is old, but with that old technology comes with simplicity. And the aftermarket parts for this car is like cheap. You got a lot of aftermarket support with this M30 motor because it comes in the E28, 7 Series. M30 is actually very smooth as well. I really like the 535s. I mean, at first they used to say, oh, it's an old motor, you gotta adjust the valves. But hey, like as long as you adjust the valves every now and then, this car has 293,000 miles. It's like reliable. So the M30 motor is bulletproof. I vouch for it. And if you're in the market for a 535, I highly recommend you buy it. Just because they're going up in value. And if it's a five speed, you're winning. There goes the first donut ever in the 535. It has open diff, so it was horrible, and they're good tires. Yeah, that's a brief insight into the 535 life. Let's go ahead and hop on to the 540 life. Brothers, we are now in my like favorite E34. You wanna know why? I'll tell you why. We're in the 540, and let me just have a disclaimer. If you're buying an E34, uh, it's not the best gas mileage. All of them aren't, because they're not a hybrid electric car. And B, they all kind of have like accessibility of parts right now. Like they kind of have, um, you know, FCP Euro, the junkyards. But sadly and honestly, the junkyards are starting to like die out with E34s. So it's kind of like, I'm not really sure what's going on. But every time I go to the junkyard, I only see like maybe one on a good day. For the most part, this is my favorite E34. Try not to be biased. It's going to give you the pros and cons from the 540. So. Pros, 540, stupid fast. It's like one of the fastest of the E34 lineup without the M5, you know, the M5 being like right here and the 540 being like right here. You can drive this car and be reassured because you can fix it. The V8 parts are plentiful. Uh, the six speed you can find it. Even if you break your six speed, you can take it from E39 to 540. I just keep falling in love with this car. I fixed my exhaust. Just take a second and hear this beautiful exhaust because I just did a new exhaust setup. Damn, doesn't that sound wonderful? You also get this beautiful sound from it, uh, the 530 that I just mentioned. I couldn't show you because the 530 hasn't had no exhaust work done. This has, and it sounds amazing. This is my favorite because of A, it's fast, B, it sounds amazing, and C, there's a lot of parts available that I can still find and revive this car if I needed to. Cons of the 540, similar to the 530, it's a pain in the butt to work on. Parts, prices for the M60. Keep in mind, you're buying two of everything. So, um, two valve covers, two sets of spark plugs, because you got four on each side. Aftermarket support is not the best, for some aftermarket cams that are probably put like what, 15 horsepower? Uh, they run around 2,400 bucks. I don't know about you, but uh, that's a lot of money. I'd rather do M50 Turbo. Another con of the 540, to find one that is pretty cheap, good luck. Because uh, these are highly desirable, just like the M5. All right, that a clip with the 540. The 530 sounds just as good, just to let you know. an E34 don't expect anything cherry not gonna go ahead and get really into depth you know I want to save like uh, into depth on each cars for another videos because this video could be so damn long so we're gonna hit a little donut and after that donut we're gonna head the hell out because we don't want to get in trouble <laughs> because I did something stupid but on a side note I forgot to say smells per gallon highly worth it in the 540 all day every day do not mind filling up this $70 tank to the M5 we go yo yo in the M5 um, where do 
I start. Really good reason why I like the M5 because uh, you don't even need an exhaust. This thing, the intake noise just sounds like amazing. because if something breaks the resources to an M5 is not truly there that's why uh, the moment you buy an M5 people are gonna call your phone and be like hey heard you got an M5 those are the higher elite M5 owners that are calling you they're welcoming you aboard and within the phone interview they're either debating if they're gonna keep you on the team and if you stay on the team that means you can't destroy M5 that means you can't modify it uh, like out of the extreme guidelines that they have you just have to follow their rules. And if you do, they are here to help you. But if you don't, they're gonna uh, band you and good luck finding parts for M5s because all the M5 owners have them. Right now, average mile per gallon is 14 miles per gallon. Then how you look at it, this could be a con. Um, a lot of people are gonna judge you. A lot of people are gonna judge you because you have an M5. So if it's not up to their standards or a lot of people are gonna have their opinion to say, because, you know, it's a classic car. Another thing is, depending who you are, you're not gonna wanna drive it. I don't wanna drive this. A, I'm scared of something breaks, but on top of that, I don't wanna put miles in the car because the more miles, the less it's worth, and then it just turns to a bad investment because there's a story around these motors, since they're like race spec, have to get rebuilt every now and then. So, yeah, try rebuilding the S38. 10 grand plus, easily. So the pros of an M5, are you own m5 not many people know but they do know they know another pro of it it's being hand built so everything is not like the hardest to work on it's not really difficult everything's easy accessible not robots put it together and just shoved into a car and you're like how the hell do i get this if you do own an m5 the values are just going up and up and up unfortunately mine is kind of like a, a workhorse so i don't think i'm gonna get gold with this bad boy if I'm forgetting anything, please comment below. I want my page to be like a forum for all the E34 owners. Um, if you're not even owning the E34, just thank you for watching the video. For the most part, if you liked it, like, subscribe, comment, all this famous YouTube stuff. In the future, I'm going to do more in-depth videos of the car. Because right now, it would just be too damn long and the video is kind of long already. So, I hope I kind of give you guys a little bit of insider on the E34, which one she should buy. If you're gonna buy something like this M5, I highly recommend that you don't daily drive this bad boy because if you do, you have balls of steel and it's not easy to fix this. It's the most expensive E34 you can own. That being said, the choice is yours. I highly recommend anybody experience E34 or any project car. All these disposable new cars are taken away from the car culture. My first time skirting the M5. So we're gonna skirt this way out of this video. Thanks for watching guys. In the future, I'll do more in-depth videos about the E34s, but for right now, that is it.